Hello and welcome my bells and mats. My name is Sheena Peril and I'm an author and network designer from the Pacific Northwest. I've written over 10 books across two pen names, several genres, and I also write nonfiction under my legal name. A little bit of background. I started publishing um, in 2016 and I started self-publishing in 2016 because my first book, The Spider's Web, came out with Publisher. Publisher folded like a few months later, so I just started self-publishing from there rather than trying to go through the whole creating process all over again. Since then, Not Magic, the umbrella under which I publish everything, has just been a one-woman show with the occasional assistance from friends that I can convince to work for knitwear. So, in this video, I wanted to talk about some of the mistakes that I've made as a writer and author. Um, and I'm using the term mistake loosely. Like, there are things where if I was able to go back and redo things, then I would change this. But I think that in a lot of cases, I made the best decision I could at the time. So let's just get in our little time machine and go back to 2016 when my first book came out. Actually, we're going to start a little bit earlier than that. And let's talk about the couple years right before I started publishing with item number one, which is trying to write like other authors. Now, there's nothing wrong with using authors that you love as a model. That's a great writing exercise to write something, even if it's just a scene in the style of your favorite author, and to read critically and look at what your favorite authors do in a scene that works, what doesn't work, uh, read them out loud to see how the language sounds and what the flow is like. But what I'm talking about is specifically having to do with romance. Um, I am asexual and aromantic, which means that I do not feel feelings of romantic attraction or sexual attraction. Those are completely foreign to me. There are people that I find aesthetically attractive, but I don't want them touching me. Like, I, I don't want to spend time alone with them. I just want to watch them from afar and let them be pretty. So trying to write romance and feeling like I had to write romance was something that really held me back at the start because I felt like I had to include it in order to make my books marketable. And part of this is because back at this time, there was basically only one resource for asexual people, which was Avon. Thankfully, they have updated and changed a lot since then. But asexuality wasn't considered a spectrum, which it is. It was either on or off, and that's it. So I thought I was broken, and I was trying to write a functional person into my fiction, and that, that didn't work because I don't understand it. It would be like me trying to write somebody who is Greek or Chinese or, you know, trying to write a culture that is not my own because I do not have those experiences. I don't know what that feels like. So that really held me back and that was something that I really had to accept and learn about myself and accept about my writing and just give myself permission to write the books that I really wanted to read and to not worry about expectations. So mistake number two that I made was not paying for help. And this is the big one for if I could go back, I would do things differently, but I made the best decision at the time, which is to say that I lived in poverty for 10 years after college. And when you are getting food from friends and family and trying to figure out which bill you're going to pay this week because it doesn't have a late fee next week, then it's really hard to say, yes, I'm going to put down $500 for cover art, or I'm going to put down 
250 for formatting and copy editing editing um so i was doing everything myself i happily knew several artists and graphic designers so um my now wife did a lot of cover art for me in exchange for hand knits so i was able to get done what I needed to get done, but I still feel like things would have been better if I'd had an actual budget to work with. Um, it would have been nice to do things like um, run some kind of promotion online or hire another editor. Um, it Basically to have more eyes on the book before it came out. I would have preferred that. Unfortunately, that was not something that was able to happen at the time. So budget considerations aside, um, I would have liked to be able to pay for help. My third mistake as a writer was paying for ad space. This was such a waste of money. Um, I paid for $150 worth of ads with Amazon and I sold two ebooks. So it was just not worth my time. It was not worth the money. It might work for some people, but in my case, it was an absolute disaster and I will never do that again. Mistake number four, and this is another kind of, I'm not sure what I would have done differently, which is not having a street team. I would have really liked to have like beta readers and more fans of my work to start with that could help me, you know, promote and leave reviews and that kind of thing. But I don't. I'm autistic. I have trouble making friends. I have trouble relating to people. And having that social backup has never been something that has happened for me. So it's something that I really struggle with even today but it's something that I am working very hard to change. And I'm hoping that with my next book, not Midnight Radio, it comes out April 22nd, but with the subsequent books, that I'll be able to work something out there. Um, it just, so far, it has not happened. I have not had enough of an in-person network for that to happen. Item number five was not taking short form work seriously. And by this, I mean short stories and articles for websites and magazines. Now, I am the type of person where I don't do short form work very well. This is why you don't see a whole lot of reels or shorts from me. I'm just, my brain is geared for long form. And I wish that I had developed my short story writing skills sooner so that I could do things like submit to contests, submit to literary journals, and get my name out there sooner and have more of a following to start with. I also would have liked to start writing nonfiction sooner, but I didn't really get into nonfiction until later. So it would have been very helpful for my career if I had started with short form work instead of diving straight into novels and trying to sell entire books to people. Item number six that was a mistake as an author, which was believing the old adage, if you build it, they will come. I've mentioned this before. This is something that I was told as an author when I was first starting out, and it's something that I hear a lot, which is the best marketing for your current book is to be working on your second book. So I didn't do enough marketing at the outset because I was just like, oh, my, my book will go up. And I, at the time I was publishing three books a year, but I still never got any traction. I never found my niche. I never found my readers. So I would have done a lot more marketing prior to the release of the book and immediately after rather than just believing that momentum would carry me through and that would be how I would find readers. Item number seven that has been a big mistake on my part is not working harder at graphic design and learning SEO. Um, I do have an arts background and an art degree. I am not good at graphic design. I am not good at 
computer graphics at all. I hate it. I am analog all the way when it comes to my art. And I really wish that I had put more effort into that when I had the tools to be able to do it. Um, when I was in school and had the computers and the software provided or covered by my tuition. So that is something that I really regret. And I also regret not learning more about SEO sooner. Um, I'm still working on it. I'm not great at it. I, I still find SEO kind of confusing and a little like witchcraft, but uh, it's something that I am working to improve and it's something that I wish I had known more about to begin with. And my last mistake as a writer has been not recognizing my autism and ADHD sooner. This one, it, it's not really my fault. I didn't get diagnosed until I was 30. So, well, actually, no, that's not true. I got diagnosed last year, not 30. Um, 30 was when I got my thyroid diagnosis. <laughs> anyway, so it, if I had known from the outset that I had autism and ADHD, it would have been so much easier for me to stay organized, to find ways of accommodating myself. And that's, I would have had access to medications and to therapies and treatments that would have helped me sooner rather than flailing around, running around blindly. It would have helped me to not be so hard on myself and so down on myself and feel like I'm broken or dysfunctional in some way. I would have had a reason for it and known a course of action I could take to correct it. It also would have helped me to recognize the symptoms of burnout sooner, to potentially prevent them, to help me recover sooner. Um, and a lot of this is just the circumstances that I was in at the time. I was working in retail, which is really not a good field for me, but it was the only job I could find at the time. I was severely underemployed. I wasn't making enough money to survive on. So there are a lot of outside factors that went into this. So I can't change the past. But I'm hoping that by pointing these things out and telling you where I messed up, that this can help you move forward and help you find solutions and prevent the errors that I made. If you have any suggestions for things that maybe you would change in your career or questions, anything like that, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you enjoyed this comment, please like and subscribe. I do a monthly knitting podcast where I talk about all of my creative work that month. And I also do videos like this in between where we talk about crafting and writing and reading and all that good stuff. So until next time, I hope that you stay safe, stay healthy, and that you have something cute and cuddly just like that to cuddle with. Ciao!